Thank you, Regina. One organization that always has our attention is Gardner. One speaker that will now be having our attention is Chris Poole, Research Managing Vice President of Supply Chain Customer Service from Gardner to talk about supply chain trends and future outlook. Chris? Good morning, good morning, Los Angeles. Um, I'm never sure whether that applause is for him getting off the stage or for me coming on it. Um, thanks and good morning, everyone. Uh, I am indeed Chris Paul, Managing VP at Gartner. Uh, the sharper amongst you will discern that I am not from these parts. Uh, that is true. I come all the way from San Francisco, actually, yesterday to talk to you. Um, I have uh, been there for two years. Uh, my intention is to live there for the rest of my life. I tell you, there are three reasons why California is a fantastic way to live, uh, place to live, and they are, one, the weather, two, the weather, and three, the weather. Uh, I am English, of course, and I come from London, and that would explain why the weather is important. I work for Gartner. Some of you may have heard of us. Uh, we are a research and advisory company. Uh, and I work, surprisingly, in the supply chain practice. In fact, I lead the team of analysts who cover supply chain planning and uh, customer experience. I'm going to talk to you today about what we at Gartner see as key supply chain trends and the future outlook for supply chain. That's largely based on our research. That's what we do, after all. Uh, and it includes what we see leading edge companies are doing, the ones that are at the forefront of our annual top 25 supply chain rankings. And I'll give some examples as I go through. Apart from the research that I've done personally in Gartner on this subject, I also bring over 31 years real life experience, mainly from Europe, both in sales and supply chain. Most of my career was with Procter & Gamble in the UK and in Sweden. I live for two years in Stockholm there. I also work for Diageo, the drinks manufacturer, all in customer service and physical distribution. So let me start with disruption. All of those companies that we see at the leading edge of supply chain practice are changing their view of how they operate. Many have even appointed a small group of people to explicitly challenge their current ways of working, whether that be about what they are delivering for customers, how they are becoming more efficient through sustainability, or how they are leveraging the digitization of supply chain to deliver better service and lower costs. You need to look no further than at these examples of how leading edge companies are transforming their supply chains by completely reinventing their supply chain operations. Amazon, of course, is well known, but who could have imagined even a few years ago a shop without lines or without checkouts? And this from the company that is the online giant. Another good example is Adidas, who are using 3D printing to deliver what they call the ultimate personalized shoe. Imagine that, a shoe manufactured just for you, your running style and needs, as well as being fashionable. But you can also look backwards to see evidence of how disruption has completely changed our supply chains. Look at this research that we did. The chart plots what was predicted in 2012 to be the e-commerce penetration of many retail categories. That's the green column. It then compares what actually happened in 2017, and then in 2017 what the prediction was of the future. That's the blue column. Now the key point here is that in every case, in every retail category, the 2012 prediction underestimated what actually happened. In other words, the 2017 blue column is higher than the 2012 green one. So the most significant disruptive event in retail in the last decade was underestimated in every case. In supply chains today, the words of Charles Darwin from nearly 200 years ago are completely relevant. Companies need to be adaptable to survive. So let's see what's going on. So what are the leading companies currently focused on in transforming their supply chains? 
Each year, our analysts research the supply chains of hundreds of companies. Through this work, we note the trends in focus and investment that can be applied broadly to others. Three key trends stand out this year for the leaders. A focus on total customer experience, a move to running circular supply chains, and continued efforts to scale digital supply chain capabilities. So let's dive into those in a bit more detail. The first trend that we see in leading supply chains is a broader focus on customer experience as compared to the traditional role that supply chain plays in delivering a profitable, perfect order. Even for that metric, on time and in full, the companies going for improved customer experience are shifting their measurement from an internal view to one that matches, it, to matches how their key customers measure their customer service. Another part of total customer experience is not just delivering physical goods to the customer, but more holistic solutions. One example we point to in this area is Hewlett Packard, HP's instant ink program. HP was losing business to cut rate sellers of ink cartridges that fit its printers. It addressed this threat through the creation of a capability that solves a common customer problem, being out of ink at the wrong time. HP recognised that it had access to the ink levels of its printers through the internet and created a replenishment programme whereby it will ship out replacement cartridges based on the consumer's projected level of ink consumption. The price of cartridges is now lower, since HP now has a much more reliable demand signal and on top of that, HP has solved the issue of what customers should do with the spent cartridges that they are replacing. HP includes a return mailing envelope for these materials and is reusing the materials from those cartridges in new products. Part of the HP Instant Ink solution was an element of remote equipment monitoring. This capability is not unique to high-tech companies. We see it across industries. Many industrial companies such as Schneider, Cat and Cummins provide this type of monitoring to enable predictive maintenance and extend the life and usefulness of customer equipment. Additionally, in this space, we see mass customization capabilities from many supply chain organizations. This includes many discrete industrial manufacturers offering configurability through agile supply chain capabilities, and also the use of 3D printing. We talked about Adidas before, but also Nike have made big bets on 3DP as a way of customizing shoes to meet the individual needs of their consumers. Lenovo is a high-tech leader and a great example of a company doubling down on customer experience. Their executive committee sets the top two to three priorities for the organization every year, and a couple of years ago, customer experience was top of the list. The supply chain organization followed suit by hiring customer experience experts and having them train and certify the rest of the organization, including the leadership team on the principles and best practices of customer experience. They also built performance measures of customer experience into group and individual goals, as well as, as, well as into incentives such as bonus programs. Underpinning the people and process are technologies that enable Lenovo to sense and analyze customer opinion and sentiment, whether through big data analysis of retail customer service responses or scraping social media posts to assess consumer opinion on their products. PepsiCo, the well-known consumer goods company, has advanced digital supply chain as well as being highly recognized by retail partners for customer centricity. They use a variety of mechanisms and technologies to get shelf visibility at a very granular level. For instance, PepsiCo runs a direct store delivery network with thousands of people observing and replenishing shelves daily, sometimes more frequently. When coupled with retailer sell-through data, PepsiCo has a supply planning process that is tightly coupled with real-time demand. They have also created value-added applications allowing local sales and supply, chains, supply chain teams to identify stock issues at retailers, to assign gap closing actions and record when those issues are closed. PepsiCo also has a variety of other digital tools for shelf availability. One of those are connected cooler cases. These are not the simple cases that most of us are used to seeing. 
When the door is open, photos of the inside of the case are captured and analysed to understand the placement and quantity of contents to aid replenishment. The cases also have sensors that monitor internal environmental conditions, as well as electrical and mechanical functions, as part of preventative maintenance. PepsiCo, along with other leading CPG and retail companies, is also using Bluetooth sensors attached to permanent shelves and temporary cardboard displays like the one shown here that, that will interact with the smartphones that we'll, we all carry to understand store traffic and consumption patterns. This allows them to advise retailers on the best display placement to the benefit of all. Intel have been focusing on customers for years. They are eager to understand what their customers think of them. So Intel asked them what they think of their customer service, in fact to rank it. If the customer reckons that their experience is excellent or very good, then it's considered what they call top two box. Intel's target is to reach over 80% responses as top two box. They have been tracking this since 2006 and made steady progress over time, such that even two or three years ago, they had already reached that target. Importantly, they don't just do that to feel good. They use the feedback as a key input to their annual customer excellence strategy renewal. In other words, they listen to their customers' feedback all the time, and this conditions what they do next. So what else are leading edge companies doing? Well, they are investing in circular supply chain solutions. The concept of running a circular supply chain is an extension of the shift many companies have already made to improving their environmental stewardship. Here's a chart that you can take home and study, but the essence of it is that leading edge companies are not only reducing the amount of inputs required by their products and packaging, uh, they're also enabling the recycling of their assets post use by customers and are designing their supply chains so that waste materials can flow back as inputs to new products. In fact, many leading companies are also offering solutions to customers that allow them to extend the life of their existing products. There is a paradigm shift occurring where the vast majority of revenue no longer needs to be earned through the upfront sale of the latest and greatest product, but is augmented by the sale of services and solutions, such as monitoring analytics, that allow for more efficient and effective customer use of the product. Schneider Electric is a company committed to, the environmental, to environmental sustainability. They have set ambitious goals for reducing their environmental footprint in terms of waste generation, energy, and water consumption. Its supply chain also supports extending the life of a customer's existing products in the field through performance monitoring and maintenance. It's also committed to reducing the amount of power consumed or wasted in the use of their electrical systems and components. They are making the shift that I described earlier from needing to earn all of their revenue through new physical products to one where value is delivered by lowering customer costs, in part through the use of services and software. Schneider is a great example of a company pursuing circular supply, pr supply principles as part of its operating model. Unilever is another company with a long-term commitment to the environment. For several years, it has been operating under its sustainable living plan, which seeks to decouple business growth from its environmental footprint, ultimately seeking to halve its footprint over the next decade. Unilever views operating with purpose as a bit of a maturity model, as you can see by the pyramid diagram on the lower left side. At the base are the requirements that everyone must fulfill, governmental and industry regulatory compliances, Above that is sustainable sourcing. Above that is sustainable and ethical sourcing that promotes fair trade and human rights. The next big leap is to move beyond its immediate supply chain to partner with others in the industry, suppliers, and in fact even competitors, to establish standards for sourcing and operations. For Unilever, this includes the work it has done to set industry standards for palm oil, for example, one of the critical commodities for its businesses. And finally, the highest level on the pyramid is coordination and partnership with governments and NGOs on policies that promote ethical and sustainable practices in the areas where it operates. An example of this is Unilever's partnership with the West African government and NGOs to establish ethical tea farming in that region. 
The government and NGOs help provide foundational elements, land, low-cost loans and training infrastructure, to support local residents interested in becoming tea farmers. Unilever brought its own resources in the form of investment capital and best practices pulled from its other tea farmers to help set up farming operations that employ more than 600 people and positively impact thousands more. Unilever has also made public commitments to have 25% of the plastic used in its packages, like these body wash bottles, come from post-consumer sources. Currently, they are at 1%, which is similar to the rest of the industry, so that's an ambitious goal. Earlier, I mentioned the cartridge recycling program that HP has as part of its Instant Ink program. In addition to that program, it was also the first company to start selling printers with a significant, about 30%, amount of plastic sourced from post-consumer waste. Part of the solution with this printer is that the consumer can return their old printer through retail channels. The plastic from the case and some components of the old printer are ground up and reused as inputs for these new HP printers. HP has a long-standing commitment to running a sustainable supply chain and moving to a circular model is really the next step in extending the concept from an operation-centric approach to one that extends through to its customer value model. The third key trend we see is the way that leading edge companies are now scaling a digital approach to supply chain. Development and deployment of digital supply chain capabilities was a theme of our research in 2017. <laughs> This year, the angle is that leading companies' initial experiments in digital supply chain are complete, and now they are starting to scale them up, in some cases across the end-to-end -end supply chain, as well as out to connect with up and downstream partners. There are foundational elements in terms of fostering an innovation culture, proper resource allocation and talent management that are enabling the successful ramp-up of digital capabilities in leading companies. These leaders are also conscious to connect supply chain's digital efforts to the broader digital business initiatives that support customers and growth. In our last research, when we asked chief supply chain officers what technologies they are adopting, nearly 20% of companies were investing early stage technologies, including those shown in the graphic here. Advanced analytics, including AI, product and supply chain based Internet of Things, conversational systems, the use of chatbots and RPA for automating repetitive manual tasks. And of course, there's blockchain. Blockchain, promising technology for sure, uh, for capabilities such as product traceability and global trade financing and facilitation. Our analysts predict that 90% of blockchain efforts will be in pilot scope over the next two years. But let's look at some examples of companies that are scaling the digital supply chain. In the domain of warehouse management, we are seeing advanced automation, such as seen in this photo of Ocado's Hive Solution. Now, I'm familiar with Ocado because it's the largest UK online grocery company. And, it's, uh, and that, in fact, they've started to sell their solution to companies that are much bigger, like Kroger, the largest grocery retailer in the US. Imagine, imagine that the picture you see of this warehouse grid extends to three to four times the size of a football field soccer uh, and is about a dozen baskets deep. Intelligent algorithms control the XY coordinates of the many robot pickers in line with the latest orders coming through the system. This example is on the far end of warehouse automation. We see many other companies building smaller scale automation through automated picking, auto palletizers and on-floor guided vehicles for moving stock and loading it onto trucks for instance. Two giants in 3M and BASF are collaborating digitally to deliver a near-time, near, near real-time visibility of demand and production across their shared supply chain. It's a clear two-way relationship. BASF get from 3M consumption and production plans, and in turn 3M get BASF factory and in-transit inventory visibility. This end-to-end -end collaboration has already delivered bottom-line business benefit in service agility and lower cost, and that's meant improved customer confidence because of a much better service reliability. Paya, 
is a Chinese home appliances manufacturer who actually just acquired GE appliances. At their futuristic plant in Shenyang, China, an Internet of Things revolution is underway in their connected factory. Most people think of IoT as just being about connected homes, but one of the most exciting applications that Hire have exploited is the creation of digital ecosystem systems linking factories, products, services, and processes. You could call this the industrial Internet of Things. Hire is one of several Chinese companies at the forefront of this transformation with a smart factory model that both automates manufacturing and customizes it to consumer needs. Underpinning the ability to pursue digital capabilities are the fundamental elements to driving supply chain innovation. The companies shown at the top of this slide are good at innovation and therefore digital supply chain. So what do they do? Firstly, they make room in their budgets and resourcing for experimental work on an ongoing basis. This might represent 5 to 10% of the total budget, set aside, like venture capital if you like, for proofs of concepts and pilots. There are also mechanisms to connect promising early stage innovation work with a larger operational funding and program execution model to enable scale and not leave it trapped in the lab. Finding the right talent is another critical aspect of successful innovation. This might be through the intentional investment in specialised resources, such as data scientists in an advanced analytics centre of excellence, or it could be crowdsourcing creative improvement ideas from operators that have a knack for thinking outside the box. Nestle, for example, runs a successful innovation crowdsourcing programme called Ingenious, that allows them to tap into ideas from their 15,000 global supply chain employees. The management team at Nestle sets a clear direction on the areas where innovations are desired, and then there's a mechanism to track and vet ideas, ultimately narrowing down to the best ones which are funded and staffed as pilots. As supply chain leaders, it's important for us to set the right culture of innovation that allows it to flourish. This means rewards and recognition both for the operator that enabled the company to make its numbers that quarter and the team building experimental tools that may or may not yield value in the immediate term, but that contribute to the overall adaptiveness of the organisation to changing business requirements. To bring all of these concepts home, this year, based on what we've seen leaders focusing their investment and time on, we have a few recommendations for the broader supply chain community. The first is assess your customer experience capabilities objectively by comparing capabilities with the maturity levels of your competitors and cross-industry best practices. In Gartner, we developed a maturity model that you can use to know where your supply chain falls on the map. Good starting points will be whether your supply chain measures perfect order the same way as key customers or your team's involvement in the customer satisfaction survey process. Secondly, conduct, conduct an assessment of supply chain capabilities that aligns with circular economy principles. Identify gaps and create a roadmap to close them. Our research team has published a few reports on this topic and a good entry point would be our special report entitled How to Lead Supply Chain in the Big Shift to Sustainable Business. And lastly, ensure digital capability roadmaps align across the supply chain for starters, but then also with the broader digital business transformation. Build the talent, technologies and change management required for scale. And that's it. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share these thoughts.